All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, let's get started. Today is gonna be mostly about graphing. Um, we have a couple things to touch on before we get into graphing, but it will be mostly about graphing. Um, yeah, before we get any further, if you haven't already, go to eCampus and download assignment number six. Uh, there's gonna be two files you're gonna need to download. You're gonna need the Word document, which is the actual homework assignment. And then you're going to need the data set, and it's called like assignment six data.sav. You need that downloaded as well, as well as your own group's data set, which can be found in lab materials, group data sets, and your data set. You'll also need that for, uh, for the homework assignment. But before we get into graphing, let's just give an overview of today of what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to have like a slide or two about the overview of last class just um, some highlights that I think that I want you to know, um, that I want you to make sure that you know. We're going to go over assignment number seven, which is your intro draft. I'm going to do like a really brief talk about mean, median, and mode. I'm going to give a very brief demonstration of SPSS before you guys start doing your, uh, your homework assignment. And then I'm going to bring up assignment number six, and I will do the first task for you slash with you. Um, just so that way you can get a little bit more familiar with it. Here are some important due dates that are upcoming. I know there's a lot. Uh, assignment number six, which is we'll, what we'll uh, start today, is due tonight at midnight. Don't think it should take you that long. You should be able to get it done less than half an hour, um, and we'll have time to work on it today. Assignment number five, which is the methods draft, is due, I believe, Sunday. Someone tell me if that is the wrong due date. Um, I know that what's on the, the, the sheet is not, like what's on the homework assignment is from last semester. I forgot the, the, the upload, the updated one. The only thing difference is the date that it's due. I believe it's due Sunday. I'll confirm that in an email after class. Um, but yeah, so due Sunday at noon. Quiz number six will be due Sunday at midnight. Take that to a couple questions. And then the assignment number seven, which we'll bring up today, is your intro draft is due next Friday at midnight, um, so in July. Uh, any questions so far? Or could someone confirm or say that the assignment number five date is correct? I believe it's a Sunday. I know. That, oh, sorry. I was just going to say that I know in one of the emails that you sent out any questions. Uh, let me just highlight uh, Wednesday's lecture review and just some things that I think it's really important that you know. Um, graphs. So know what the different types of graphs are and know when you should use them. Uh, the different graphs are the bar, the histogram, the line, the pie, uh, the pie graph, and then a box and whisker plot. And then be able to identify important aspects of the graphs that we talked about like the uh, the what different lines mean on the box and whisker plot. If I were to point at a line and say, hey, what does this line represent? You should be able to tell me what it is. Oh, I, I sent an email saying assignment number seven was due seven four. Yeah, that's fine as well. Um, I can, yeah, we can change that due date for assignment number seven to be the fourth. Um, so it's, I guess, Sunday at midnight. That's fine. I'll send whatever, whatever email I send out after class will be the definitive. But yeah, I, I can push back that intro assignment to 7-4. But anyways, so regarding uh, Wednesdays, um, yeah, no, like be able to identify different parts of a graph, like, or the box and whisker plot. Uh, Know this frequency distribution chart. Some people were struggling a little bit on Wednesday with this, um, but know what each column represents and what specific, and be able to tell me, like if I asked you, what does 15 mean on this? Be able to tell me what 15 represents. Um, there's gonna be a couple questions on the quiz uh, for this week um, regarding this. So just really make sure that you can understand this graph or this, this chart and be able to tell me what specific things mean. And then at the very end, we talked about what is central tendency and a really brief overview of variability and skewness. Um, so just, you know, no basic definitions and we'll get more into that later. 
Um, I'm not going to go over this in, in depth. This, this I believe, is also on uh, Wednesday's PowerPoint lecture as well. But this is just a breakdown of what goes in each paragraph in the methods section. Uh, use this as sort of a checklist for your own methods um, to make sure that you hit every one of these points. And then obviously make sure you're reading the, the uh, methods uh, assignment number five uh, homework assignment because it also breaks it down as well. And use that example I, gave, I sent out as a really, as a strict guideline. But yeah, not gonna go into the details of this. You can stop and come back to this PowerPoint um, and read it if you so choose. All right. Um, when uh, Monday's, so Monday's lecture is gonna be really focused on measures of central tendency, but I'm gonna assume that you all have a basic understanding of mean, median, and mode. Uh, there are three questions on quiz number six about this. This is really just for me to gauge how, mm, how in depth I need to go on Monday. I'm hoping I, don't, I can just glance over how to do these and what the definitions are. Um, and we can focus on some other things, but let me just give a really brief overview um, today. So the mean is the average. How to find the mean? Well, you just add up all the data points and then divide by how many number of data points there are. So uh, for these 10 numbers that I have here, the mean would be 83 divided by 10 because there's 10 numbers. 83 is just me adding them all up. And the mean is 8.3. The mode is just which number occurs most in the data set. And if you would go through, you would realize that six occurs the most and it happens three times. And then the median, all you got to do is put the, it is the middle number in the data set. You just got to put them in order and then, um, you know, go along the ends, keep on chopping them off till you get to the center of the data set. If there's two numbers left, because you have an even amount of numbers, you just take the middle. Hopefully the terms mean, median, and mode are, you know them. Um, this is something that should have came up, I'd assume, in middle school. Uh, but we never know. So anyways, there's a couple questions on assignment on a quiz number six about this. We just have to find the mean, median, mode of some data set. Um, I'm just going to see, hopefully everyone gets majority of the questions correct. That way I can just skip over it on Monday or glance really briefly at it. All right, so let's uh, continue moving on. Um, I just wanted to bring up this slide to show you where we're at in terms of your paper. So if you've been following along and doing the homework assignments, and I highly suggest that you do, um, but I know a lot of people didn't do an assignment number four, that's on you, it's just make your life a little bit easier for assignment number seven. But if you've been following up with the assignments, you should have, or we should have all of these check marks, we've either touched on them, you have a draft or some outline for it. So you can see um, really all that we have left is this data analysis paragraph, it's just a cookie cutter paragraph, but we'll get over, we'll talk about it later. We have the results section, which is also just a cookie cutter paragraph where um, I give you the paragraph that you need and you just have to put in the correct information regarding your, your output whenever you run your correlation. And then the discussion section, we're just gonna focus on a draft of it this semester. Um, yeah, so that, that's not gonna be too much work. But yeah, so hopefully you can see, if you've been following along with the assignments, we actually have a majority of this paper done or, or have started on it in terms of the assignment number, um, assignment number, what was it, three, which was the introduction outline before, whatever, whichever one it was. But we have most of this done. So I just want you to see if you've been following along, the paper is, you know, we're almost done with the paper or we're getting there. So that gets us to assignment number seven. All of you, if you did assignment number four, uh, should have feedback on eCampus. Just click on the grade that pops up on eCampus and you should be able to see my, uh, my feedback. Uh, how to see my actual feedback, I don't think I ever really talked about this before, but all you gotta do is download the assignment and then open it in Word and you'll be able to see the comments that I leave on specific sections. Um, I know someone said that they had a hard time or they couldn't see it whenever they use Google Docs, like they opened it up in Google Docs and they couldn't see the comments. I've heard people in other semesters say they could easily see it on Google Docs, um, but I know you definitely will be able to see it if you download the assignment and open it, open it in Word. Um, yeah, make sure you're using my feedback that I give you. A lot of the times I just say, hey, you should say it like this, and I give you the actual sentence that you should use. Um, either I give you the full sentence or I, you know, do a dot, dot, dot and allow you to fill in the blanks. Make sure you're using that feedback um, 
for the remainder of a lot of these assignments regarding the paper, it's not just based on effort like some of the prior assignments were, but actually on quality now. So if you don't incorporate my feedback for like the introduction draft, your grade is going to be heavily impacted, even if you put effort in. So make sure you're, using, you're utilizing my feedback. Um, yeah, so assignment number seven is just writing the full draft for the introduction section. You all, if, well, okay, if you did assignment four, you already have a really good uh, start on this. Um, I'm not going to pull up the assignment. You guys can read the assignment. There's information on it. Make sure you're reading the information. And this is due, so this will be changed, but this, Tuesday, July 2nd. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, it shouldn't say Tuesday. If this will be due, um, I believe, Sunday, July 4th. I think that's the assignment that we're changing. Sunday, July 4th. So you have a week and two days with that. But I highly recommend that you don't wait until the last minute to do this. Writing an introduction is not, even if you have the draft already, which if you did assignment four, you did, um, it's not the easiest thing in the world. It does take some time to make a good introduction. I believe, yeah. So once again, I have this slide like I had for the methods, really breaking down what should go in each paragraph. Come back after class whenever you're working on the actual introduction homework assignment and take a look at this PowerPoint slide because I break down what goes in each paragraph. And I even give you some sentences that you should use. Like, therefore, it's important to understand what influences your DV. That's a phrase that you that would be in a really good intro paragraph. And I've also left these comments on a lot of your assignment number fours already. I say, hey, maybe you should say it like this, or you should structure your paragraphs like, like this. Anyways, come back to this, this PowerPoint slide when you're working on the introduction, just to make sure that you have all the paragraphs that you need. Uh, yeah, technically we're supposed to go over like how to do a uh, APA style title page. Just for the sake of time, I already gave you a proper APA styles title page um, in that student example that I sent out Wednesday or last week, whenever it was. I'm going to try to upload it to eCampus. eCampus is really weird where it's like I'm exceeding how much data is on our particular class page. So I have to start deleting stuff. Anyways, I'll try to upload it um, just the way it's there. But use this uh, APA style title page that I sent out. I believe it was on Wednesday. Um, and I'll send it again. I'll send it out again tonight. But anyways, use that. We don't have to go over it. Here's a slide that breaks down what exactly is on an APA style title page. But if you use that example um, that I gave you, it's already already set up for you. Anyways, come back to this lecture. Take a look at that. All right. So are there any questions about the intro um, homework assignment or the methods homework assignment, which is due you know, this week or next week before we switch gears a little bit? All right. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit. Um, assignment number six is going to be all about graphs. And you're going to be creating graphs from SPSS. I want to bring up the assignment a little bit later after I give a demonstration of SPSS, but this is just a general breakdown of what you're going to have to do. There's going to be, I think, six tasks in the homework assignment, and you'll see once you open it up. But tasks one through five is just creating graphs and answering a couple questions about each graph um in a sample data set so that was that assignment six dash data set dot sav that i had you download in the beginning so you'll be using that to create those graphs and then you're going to be creating graphs from your own data so you're going to in task six it's going to ask you hey create two graphs from your own data that makes sense and um yeah and there's instructions for that and then there's interpretation questions for each um for each graph that you create relatively simple um, you know, be like, what is, you know, are there more males or females? And then you just got to look at the graph and tell me the answer. It says write in full sentences. I don't care about that as long as your answer is there. And I'll show you what I mean on uh, task number one, because I'll walk through that. This is due tonight at midnight. Um, we'll have time to work on it today. You can, you know, after this lecture, you can leave. If you want to work on it on your own time, you don't have to stay. Um, after I say you can leave, uh, but it is due tonight at midnight. All right, before we do that, though, I want to give a brief demonstration or show you around SPSS because I 
realize that this is the first time that most of you have ever seen SPSS. Can you still see my, uh, my screen that has the SPSS data set open? All right, cool, I see some nods. So I wanted to start off by showing you what a data set looks like after I download it from Qualtrics. So this is the exercise group, groups one, two, and three. This is just the raw data that I downloaded from Qualtrics, and I just wanted to show you around SPSS a little bit. So if I scroll over, you can see here is just all the raw data that our participants put in. So we can see for, you know, for this question, and it turns out that this is the, the first question for the body, the body image group. I forget which group it is, might be group two. Uh, but you can see that this participant said one for question one, for question two, they said one, for question three, they said two. So that gets us to the first thing about SPSS, and that's how the data is laid out. It's kind of, it, it's set up very similar, uh, it, very similar to Excel, if you've ever used a lot of Excel, but each row is a participant. So going from left to right in one row is just all of one participant's data. So we can just imagine this is our first participant that we ever had. And we can go along and we can see what information they put in for each question, right? We can see all of their raw data. So that's each row is each participant. So this is participant one. I scroll all the way down. This is participant 115. If I scroll all the way down, let's go to the very end. This is participant 356. So each column is a different variable or a different question that we asked our participants. So uh, some of this stuff Qualtrics just gives us, like we didn't ask them, you know, what day did you start or how long, you know, the Qualtrics just gives us this information, but we can see, let's go to our first question, gender. So our first question that we asked participants were, what was your gender? And so we can see that this column is that gender question. And if I wanted to go to, you know, participant one, I could see participant one said they were a female. Now, some of you may remember this, but I talked about a couple weeks ago how SPSS is a computer program and we need to put numbers to words, right? We have categories like male, female, other, or third gender. There's a couple options that we have. And SPSS needs to give those numbers. So if I click this button here and on the homework assignment, it shows a different way how to do it. But if I click this number, I can change our categories, our word categories into number categories for how SPSS just automatic, or actually Qualtrics did it. Qualtrics just automatically assigns numbers to it. So this makes more sense if we go into this, this tab down here called variable view. Now I should mention that none of you should have to, you won't have to do this for this homework assignment. I'm really just showing you the layout of SPSS. During a normal semester, you would actually have to clean your own data. I'd walk you through that, but because we don't have enough time, this is the best that I'm gonna be able to do with showing you around. But let's go to this gender question. So I clicked on this variable view tab on the bottom. Data view, we can see all of the raw data. We can see everything that everyone has said. Variable view gives us a behind the scenes look at our variables. And so in particular, I wanna, let's just stick with gender, our gender variable. So we hear that we see it's named gender on this first column, this first column name. I can name it whatever I want. You know, I could name it psych 203 for some reason if I wanted to name it that. But because it's gender, let's keep it at gender. A weird quirk in SPSS is it doesn't allow for spaces in its names. Don't know why. So if I tried to do um, a space, it would be like, oh, there's an error. All of your variable names, you know, you do do like an underscore if you wanted to put a space. Anyways, just a little quirk in SPSS. So the one thing I want to bring to your attention is this values column. And this is that idea of assigning numbers to categories. Because SPSS, like I said, is a computer program, it needs numbers to do its analyses. And so, hopefully, so I'm not going to ask, but hopefully we can remember that gender is like a nominal variable or order doesn't matter in our in, in how we label things. So hopefully you can see we labeled a one as male, a two, a two is female, a three is non-binary slash third gender, and a four is a prefer not to say. Now, it doesn't matter if I would have males labeled as two and females labeled as one. No, it wouldn't matter, right? Order doesn't matter for this. 
Now, here's an example where order does matter. So for this question was the body image group. And so we can see the actual question here. Uh, for each of the following, please choose how strongly you disagree with the statement. I feel confident in my everyday's clothes, right? So you would, on a scale of strongly disagree to agree, how I feel confident in my everyday's clothes. So let me show you. So on their scale for this body, for this body positive body image group, the scale ranged from zero to three, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Hopefully you see the difference between these two variables, between gender and this, in that it actually matters the order of this, right? A zero is a, a zero, this strongly disagree wouldn't make sense if we had it coded as a two. And strongly, you know, and agree was strong was coded as a zero. That doesn't make sense. There's a logical order to these answers. Therefore, there's an order in how we have to number them. But for something like for something like gender, order doesn't matter. So hopefully this is showing that idea of like nominal versus interval ratio ordinal. It's showing this in real life now. And, and, and we're actually applying that logic. All right. So this is SPSS. We can see um, some behind the scenes using this variable view. You won't have to really change anything for your own data sets. Um, actually, let me show you your own data set. So this is what the raw data looks like. Not all that useful, right? If you're trying to do analyses, really not that useful because we don't have a total score of let's say self-esteem or we don't have a total score of body image. So I went ahead and did that for every group. And this is just groups one data set, but all of your data sets will look roughly like this. Some of the variables will be changed out. But what you can see is I reverse scored all of your questions that needed reverse scored, and I added up and totaled all of your scales. So I created a score that says like group one underscore final variable or group two, group three, group four, group four, group five. Um, so every one of you will have a column and I believe it should be the first column, but I could be wrong but where I totaled up your score. So this is the final variable value for, let's say participant one scored a 24 on the groups one, whatever scale they were asking. And then we can see for self-esteem. So group one is correlating whatever their exercise, I think, and self-esteem. And so we can see their, self, their final self-esteem score for this participant is 13. So I already added them all up for you. You don't have to do any of that data manipulation. But you'll be able to see each group has their variable and whatever variable they're correlating with. So their IV and their DV. I have how long it took the participants because in your methods section, you should mention, hey, it took participants on average two minutes to do it. And I'll show you how to find that information on a later date whenever we get into our results. We have the gender, age, year that they're in school and their ethnicity. So here's some of the variables. This is what a cleaned data set looks like. And this is what your guys' data, each for each of your groups will look like. So you're going to need this data set um, or your group's data set to answer questions, task six on the homework assignment. So you're going to be creating graphs out of two of your variables here. All right. So that gets us to assignment number six. Does anyone have any questions about like just general questions about SPSS. I know it was very brief, my overview, um, but as of right now, you guys don't know how to, don't know, have to know how to do all the stuff that I just talked about. I just wanted to show you what SPSS looked like. But are there any questions about SPSS in general? So let me show you assignment number six. So let me open it up. All right, so here's assignment number six. And don't get worried when you see that it's like it's 14 pages long, do not stress out. But what you'll see in assignment number six is that we break it down step by step how to do each graph. So as long as you can follow along with instructions, it's step by step, we even give you pictures of things to click and we give you what the final result should look like. So you can double check to make sure your graph look similar to this. The colors will be different um, because I don't want you just copying and pasting this graph into your final homework assignment, but this will look like you'll, you'll be able to double check yours with what we give here. But you can see that we're going to have you create several different types of graphs, bar, histograms, a pie chart, a line, and a, and a, a box plot. And we give you step-by-step -step instructions for each one. 
So don't stress too much. As long as you can follow instruction, you'll be fine. At the very bottom is, um, or for the last like five or six pages, is where you're going to have to paste in your graph and answer the question about that particular graph. So let me go ahead and just delete that. And let me show you an example of, I'm going to walk through task number one, which is creating a bar graph. I suggest that you just watch what I do, and then you can do it later. But I'm going to make it so that way it is split screen. So I have my data set that I downloaded. Um, it gives instructions like to open up a data file in the homework assignment. You can do it this way where you open up a new SPSS and then you like file open a data set, or you can just double click and open the data set that you downloaded from eCampus, the um, assignment six data set. If you just double click, it will automatically open it up and open it up in SPSS. So you don't have to like go through these instructions to open it. You can just open the actual data file. Anyway, so we follow these instructions or not, and we opened up the data set. So here we have the assignment six data set on the right hand side of the screen. So let's go into task one and let's just start off. So we can see it says select graphs, legacy dialogues, and then bar. So I click that, click on simple, then define. Oops, I've already done this, so let me reset it. Okay, it's completely reset. Click on gender to highlight it and then click the arrow button next to category axis. So that's what I did. I highlighted gender over here, brought it over to category axis, like it says, like it says in this instruction. Now we need to tell SPSS what we want the bars to represent. And some of these things should look familiar. So we could do the mean, we could do the cumulative percentage, the number of cases, the percentage of cases, the cumulative N, but it says here, we just want total number of cases. It's a simple number of cases. So we click this one number of cases under bars represent. Then we click OK to have SPSS graph it. So I clicked OK. And here's a quirk of SPSS. And listen, listen very carefully to this, because I don't want you to lose your work. So anytime you do something in SPSS, no matter what you do, if you create a graph, if you find a mean, you find a correlation, what it's going to do is put the output into its own window, into a separate window. And it'll name it like output one or output two, whatever. One thing I really recommend is saving this output rather regularly, regularly, because what you don't want to end up doing is doing all of this homework and it's going to put it into this output and then all like you accidentally exit out or something and you lose all of your work. So I recommend saving this output very regularly with a name like Psych 203 output, you know, assignment six or whatever, just so that way you have it for later. Anyways, so what we can see is I've done, I've already done it before, but this is the, the new one that I did. What we can see is SPSS gave us a graph and we graph gender so we can see how many females and how many males there are. All you need to do now is go down to task number one, right? So we need to paste in the graph so we can do right click on it, copy, paste. You may have to play with the formatting a little bit. You know, if you use con uh, control C, control V, maybe something uh, doesn't put it directly on this page. Just make sure the graph is underneath the, the, the assignment or the, the, uh, the task. And then we just got to answer, which gender was more prevalent in the sample? So we just look at the graph and hopefully you can see that females were more prevalent. So just type in females for that answer. You don't have to do sentences. I know it, it'll probably say sentences on the homework assignment. Don't worry about putting in complete sentences. You can do it if you want. I just want to see the answer at the very minimum and the graph. All right. So I did the first one. I created a bar graph. What you have to do is just reproduce what I just did. So just following all the instructions here and then do that for the rest of them for task two, three, four, and five. Then for task six, you need to create two graphs using your own data set. So use that data set for your group that can be found on eCampus. Um, you can see there's some instructions here, but what I really want to highlight or want you to think about is what graph works best for your situation, like do or for what variable you want to choose. For example, I talked about this about like a pie chart. Do we really want to see a pie chart of every single age? And it tells you how many participants are in each age range or are in each individual age. 
No, we don't. That won't be that useful. Or even a bar graph of how many of all the different ages, because we don't care about, oh, there were six 18 year olds and seven not and seven 19 year olds. And but the, the graph, and I showed an example of this on Wednesday, the graph would have way too many bars. It just would, it just wouldn't look right, wouldn't be that useful. So what I really want you to think about is what graph you should use for whatever variable that you want. Really think about it, go back to Wednesday's lecture to, to look like to look at, oh, when should we use bars versus a histogram? Because there are differences. Um, you know, and think about those spaces. If there's spaces in between the bars, what does that mean? It means that they're categorical and the categories aren't related. It's not continuous. When do you use a histogram? Well, when you do have continuous data. So I really want you to think about that. All right, so that's assignment number six. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for the, the lecture. The rest of the class, the next 45 minutes can be spent um, working, on this, working on this assignment. You can go, you can stay, and I'll answer any questions about the assignment. But yeah, so just work on assignment number six. Um, make sure you're aware of assignment number five and, and assignment number seven due dates. I'll send out an email after class. But yeah, so at this time you can stay, you can go um, work on assignment number six. Regardless of whether you stay or not, it is due at midnight but I am here to answer any questions.